Hello, welcome to Lil's Vintage World. In this video, I'm going to review three more books in the Furred Middlebrow book series published by Dean Street Press. This is a collection of books that is ever growing, <laughs> uh, which take forgotten authors, forgotten works of writers from the early part of the 20th century and republish them for the modern reader. So similar to say Persephone books or the British Library Room Writers series, they do the same and they are wonderful. They all have like these similar covers where it kind of looks like a house and then beautiful pictures on the covers and they're lovely. And I do very much question why these books often went out of print, particularly some that I have given five stars to. I'm like, why on earth did you ever go out of print? But hey ho, it's, we're very lucky that um, they are back in print. Thank you to Dean Street Press and uh, other publishing houses. So let's get straight into it. I will start with, I don't want to say my least favourite, but the one that I rated the lowest. That also sounds awful, doesn't it? Um, let's just lead up to my most favourite. <laughs> Let's just say that, I think. Oh dear. Um, okay, so the one that I rated the least among them, although that sounds terrible, but I still enjoyed it and gave it three stars. This is Much Dithering by Dorothy Lambert. This I read the longest time ago as well. Um, so I'm a little hazy, but bear with me. This is about a mother and daughter who are at this place and the mother is always constantly like wanting to better herself in terms of partner. So if her partner had a certain position or rank in life, she then wanted the next level up, so to speak. The mother is awful, but very funny with it. Um, and that, I'm afraid, is all I can say because it's one of those books that as I was reading it, I really enjoyed it. But pretty much as soon as I finished it, and as I actually, as I was coming to the end of it, I realized, I'm not going to remember this. This is not going to be a memorable book. Now that's not me saying it's a bad book. It's just for me, not blowing my socks off, amazing chef kiss sort of book. It's a book that is good, is enjoyable when you read it at the time, but it's not sticking with me. But I still thought it was worth a read just for the vile mother. Because <laughs> who doesn't love a vile mother in a book? Okay, the next one, Going up in rank, we're at four stars now. We are at Tom Tiddler's Ground by Ursula Orange. I read this book with the lovely Ange from the channel Beyond the Pages. And, um, well, I said I've read it with Ange. <laughs> we started at the same sort of time. And then I just had this problem, as I do with Ursula Orange, in which I started it. I think I was actually behind Ange at the beginning. And I just had a day where I just, you know, I was about 20 pages in and then suddenly, I read the whole thing. I pretty much read this in one go. I was reading little bits and little bits and then whoosh, read the whole lot. <laughs> I have a problem. So Tom Tiddler's Ground is set during the Second World. It was also published during the Second World War as well. And it's about this woman called Caroline. Caroline is married and she lives in London, but her husband's a bit worried about her. So he sends her kind of away and off she goes to this village and she goes to stay with her friend called Constance. Constance is also married and Caroline is kind of debating whether to have an affair or not, which I know sounds awful, but go with it. And while she's at this village, there's a whole lot of things happen. So there's things happening in Constance's marriage as well. There's a lot of things happening in the village in which Constance resides and of course Caroline is staying. One of the things is Constance as well as taking in Caroline she takes in like this um, pregnant woman as well um, and the difficulties that come with that and just a whole lot of other things that happened during the war and during village life. It's very much St Mary Mead with the villagey gossipy atmosphere and everyone up in everyone's business but no murders so. <laughs> There we are. I have to say a huge, huge thank you to Dean Street Press, Ferret Medoral, because without them, I would have never, well, maybe, but chances are very, very slim of me finding Ursula Orange. Ursula Orange is right up there for me with my favorite authors. I think a great way to describe Ursula Orange is as a young Barbara Pym. If you like Barbara Pym, all the nitty gritty little details of every single day life and just writing women beautifully and so realistically, 
you will like Ursula Orange. As I said, she reads like a younger version of Barbara Pym because she writes about younger women, kind of very young married women, whereas Barbara Pym writes mostly about older women, um, a lot of spinsters, or, or women that are kind of middle-aged sort of thing. Ursula Orange often writes about quite young women and does that amazingly well. I mean, Ursula Orange was um, very young when she wrote her first novel, Begin Again. I think she was in her 20s when she wrote that. And she passed away when she was also very young as well. So I think there is that certain level. And as I said, if you like Baba Pym, you'll love Ursula Orange. It's just, it goes together. As I said, I gave this four stars. I did really, really enjoy it. The reason why it's four stars and not five is because there's two of the books out there in print of Ursula Orange. Now, there are actual six novels of Ursula Orange that she wrote in her lifetime. Three of which, as I said, have come back in print, thanks to Dean Street Press. Three of which haven't yet. I'm crossing my fingers, crossing my toes. I'm like, someone please reprint them. Um, and Begin Again by Ursula Orange was my favourite book of 2020. It was incredible. I still can't go for that book. Then I read Company in the Evening and I gave it like a four slash four and a half stars. However, since time has just gone on and it's sat in my head, it's one of those books that will not leave my brain. And I've had this kind of bookish hangover about Company in the Evening for such a long time that I'm now upping it to like a four and a half slash five star book. It's incredible. So this is now a very comfortable four star. Company in the Evening is a four and a half, five star. And Begin Again is very solid five star. So that's why I sit with this orange, but they're all really flipping amazing and you should read them because I've now found a new favourite author. I will stop waffling on about a star orange. <laughs> and lastly, if you can work it out, I've got a three star, four star, what's this gonna be? It's a five star. This is Not At Home by Doris Langley Moore. This was the last of the Dean Street Press Fred Middlebrow books that I had <laughs> on my bookshelves. I have no more. I have no more new books of this anymore. I have them sat on my wish list, but that's as far as they've got. So you'll have to wait quite a long time before you get another one of these videos, but hey ho, um, you get in this one. It's good. Not at Home by Doris Langan Moore was spectacular. So this is about a woman called Eleanor. Eleanor has a really nice home. Um, she lives in London, very nice, posh, swanky place. And she is a botanical writer, shall we say. She's very knowledgeable in her field and I love botanics. So I was like, oh yes please. And her house sounds beautiful. I think they've done the cover so well in a way to kind of like describe Erna's home. It's all very tastefully done. And then right at the beginning, we know that Eleanor wants to kind of lease part of her house, like split her house in half sort of thing and rent out it for a couple of reasons. Um, she just essentially needs the money um, and the best way to do it in her eyes is to get tenants in essentially. And so within, chapter one, we have a Mrs. Banks come to have a look at the property. Mrs. Banks has been recommended by a kind of mutual friend between the two. And Mrs. Banks is extravagant, frivolous, and really annoying. <laughs> and she is a horrible, horrible, horrible woman. She is married to a man who's a journalist abroad, like within the army. They are an American couple. Their children still live in America and they're over here in London. And it, it kind of just works out that Mrs. Banks persuades Eleanor uh, to stay. However, I do have to read you this bit because I thought it was absolutely hilarious because this is, this is the last kind of bit of the first chapter. She had almost certainly never taken such dislike to anyone in the whole course of her prudent, 
and well-organized life. That's Eleanor talking about Mrs. Banks. So that's the end of chapter one. She says that she doesn't like her. And Mrs. Banks moves in and she is awful. She treats the place terribly. There's something happens to birds and dogs, which I just absolutely, I hated her before, but I despised her after. The way she treats Eleanor and the home is so disrespectful. I have no idea how she has friends. She goes from one person to another, just getting what she wants from them and then just discarding them. And I don't know why people hang out with her. She's vile, but it's one of those characters that you kind of love to hate. And it was one of those books where I just couldn't put it down at all. It was incredible. I've never read a book by Doris Langley Moore before, but I definitely will in the future because her writing was spectacular and so, so addictive. I mean, in comparison to the other two books, it's quite thick uh, and it's a, certainly longer. I mean, this is like just shy of 300 pages, which is quite long for one of these, but whoa, didn't I speed through it? I just adored it and I had to know what happened. I'm like, can she get rid of these horrible people? Um, but I'm not going to spoil it for you, am I? No, I'm not. But yes, I thought it was absolutely magnificent and you should definitely go and read it and check them out. And that's all I have to say. So there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Chat to me all things these books or Dean Street Press, Frodo Medbrow or just forgotten books in general. I hope you're having a lovely day. Take care and I shall see you soon for the next video. Bye for now.